Hey folks, Jonathan here. Alright, another day. It's Sunday. It's cold and wet and, wet and rainy. And uh, I got uh, a lot of things I need to do, but there's just a couple of little things I wanted to do. I wanted to check a couple of things out on these steam engines I got. As you can see, I don't even have them off the trailer yet because I'm not sure where I'm going to put them or what the plans are yet. But I do know that uh, the curved spoke flywheel, uh, my wife sort of... Uh, decided that that was the one that she would definitely like to see put together and was actually looking for a place to put it because she's really I guess she kind of impressed with the uh, the cordless engine uh, you know not necessarily with what I done I mean she's impressed with the the way that it runs and quiet and smooth I think she thought it was going to be noisy and loud and uh, you know it's 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 crazy when you're that close to it that much mass and that much weight rolling in it's just you know so smooth so you know it's pretty it's pretty amazing so uh anyway uh touch on a couple things on it okay so a lot of folks was uh talking bad about me leaving that insulation inside of that cover uh but there was a reason that i'd done that uh well first i've got severe emphysema and then we got vic there he's 75 years old uh you know we don't we definitely don't need to be breathing something we don't even know what it is and uh so we didn't want to get it airborne or anything like that. I just wanted to do some research. I mean, you know, you're better off researching than just jumping into something. But also, we just had one cover off. You know, we had to take the other cover off, all the linkage and everything to get to it, and then the bottom side and the top side on that base. So there's a lot of it in there. So it's going to take some time, and I don't have anything to put back in there right now. So, you know, for now, it's not hurting anything. It's probably been in there for 100 years. So, I mean, if it hasn't rusted it out yet, it's not going to rust it out you know where it's sitting at now because it was actually out in the weather from 2015 or something up until uh, I picked I got it and then before that the building was about down so I'm sure it leaked on it you know but you can see this one's way rustier than than what the Bates is and I don't see anything inside of it so uh, anyway so we'll eventually do something about that so this is an opposite engine one's a right one's a left and I can't remember how you differentiate them between one or the other but uh basically the valve gear is on the opposite side the flywheel is on the opposite side so uh and this is a hamilton and i think made hamilton ohio and uh you know they're nice engines i actually ran one up at denton and great running engine and we're not missing all the parts for it there we're missing other stuff uh like i said this this stuff wasn't stored very well so it wasn't stored well but it also got moved and when it got moved anything that was on the uh, that's our conclusion we've come to because i got pictures of it before when it was uh sitting in one spot and there was stuff stacked on it and anything that fell off didn't get picked up if it was still on it like there was a dash uh, pot still on that one it stayed on it but anything that fell on the ground they just went ahead and uh i guess bulldozed it. i'm assuming that's what happened and so we're missing a lot of stuff we're missing both Babbitt pieces that go in here and they would be solid steel and then the, the rest of the roundness is seven inch crank same as my baits and it would have adjusted from here you know to push it in and out and uh let me see i don't see i don't reckon you'd think there'd be an adjustment on this side but there's not my baits has got wedges that go in there that tighten them up so this is made a little different but uh but anyway uh we do have one for the other engine i'm going to show you everything on it here in a second uh stuff like this you know if it would have fell off it wouldn't have gotten picked up thank goodness it didn't fall off. but you know we're missing parts we may or may not ever mess with this one i don't know uh it's not going to scrap that's you know our goal that was the important part so what i wanted to do because my wife likes this one uh not the baits or not the hamilton cordless but the big spoke flywheel uh the erie city ironworks engine right there now this is called a box bed and it's sort of if you look the way the frame's made it's like a i don't know victorian style or something like that i don't know that much about that kind of stuff but uh the cylinder bolts down on it and there's a couple of clues that tells you well there's quite a few clues that tells you it's early first box bed Second, of course, is the curved spoke flywheel. And let me see, you'll get over to the other side and I'll show you some things. So we're missing the outboard bearing for this. So what it is, is this 
this block bearing, the crank goes through it, you got the crank fan, which is a, called a side crank engine because the crank's on the side and not in the center. If it had another bearing here and a crank, you know, the journal was in the center, it'd be a center engine, uh, center crank. So side crank engine, and then you have it through here, you have the flywheel running here, and then further out you would have another bearing on a platform, uh, just like the base engine. The problem is I'm missing that bearing, and this is a five and a quarter uh, is what size this crankshaft is. So we've got to find a early, hopefully early block bearing for it. That's, you know, what we're looking for. And, you know, this is a quest to find parts. I mean, I'm, well, I need to find that. There's other stuff that I need to try to find and get together. And this is not, you know, we're not starting on this engine. We're, we're trying to figure out what we need to do on it. So we want to start getting prepared for maybe, you know, this coming summer or maybe toward the end of the in the fall or something we can uh, maybe get started on it I wanted to get it apart and see how really how bad it was and it's pretty rough so we pulled the side cover off a lot of leaves and stuff out of it uh, rust what happened was is this was completely open and raining into it and of course this valve was open so it was going into the top side uh, I'm hoping because the valves closed on the bottom side that the bottom side of the pistons in good shape it probably is it's about halfway in the center I think yeah it's about half exactly halfway in the center so everything on the bottom I'm hoping is in better shape than what it is on top but we're still probably gonna have to bore it uh, it's pretty rough I mean with a steam engine you could probably get by honing it out uh, cleaning it all up but it would be so much nicer to bore it and then uh, we can take the piston braise it up recut the ring grooves in it and actually make the piston bigger and I've seen it done before uh, it's you know not that big of an issue the main thing is is getting the piston hot enough to you know to actually braise to it uh, you know th this looks like it's peened just like the, the end of the crankshaft just like the other engine was so we'll have to uh, do something with it and once made this head you can see it's cut with a what looks like a torch but a really clean cut but you can also see where they've done the valve relief with the torch. So why they wouldn't grind that off a little bit to make sure nothing, look, you see what I'm saying? So nothing could fall off of it. I mean, that was just, that was just pure laziness. It had to be to torch it like that. Now that reason it's torched is for the, there's the, the porch right there. And that keeps the, keeps the head from covering the port. So, uh, but it needs ground around it to make it look a little better. Uh, I guess it must be steel instead of uh, cast iron, but it worked. It's fine. Probably got water in it one time. Somebody cracked it. Uh, you know, blowed the head off of it or whatever. So one of the things that tells you that this is an early engine. Uh, I've got three engines like this, and the steam chest is separate from the cylinder. Uh, anything after what seems like about night. I mean, 1890, uh, maybe in 1880s somewhere. Anything after they would have uh, cast this together instead of just a single and we've got this one we've got the bookwater engine james leffel which is 1873 and then we've got the uh little upright engine from what we think is the 1860s 1870s that was a marine engine and they all three have the separate one so we're including this one anyway so we're also missing we're also missing the eccentric, which is a pretty easy and simple eccentric. We can make one if we need to. Uh, probably find one close enough to replicate. It's got some cracks on the sides here, but that don't really hurt it. Uh, it's nothing but a strap that goes inside here, and it's usually steel to steel or cast to steel or cast to cast, I guess what it would be, and just keep it old. So we'll come up with an eccentric. Not an issue there. Well, I said issue, somebody said an issue is a magazine or a book or a subscription or something. So I'm supposed to say not a problem, but uh, it's not a problem. So, and it's def definitely not an issue, not a magazine issue. So, all right, we want to find out what the stroke is. So it's going to be 18 because we're nine inches from the center of the crank pin to the center of the crank, center of the rod pin to the center of the crank nine inches so we're 18 inches on the stroke and now we're going to go see what the bore is okay cylinder bore is 
14, same as the baits in. Okay, so we got a 14 inch bore and an 18 inch stroke. And the baits engine is a 14 inch bore, 36 inch stroke, so it's double that. Now, our Schofield engine, the one that my wife bought me for our 30th wedding anniversary, is a 15 inch bore, 18 inch stroke. So it's one inch bigger on the bore than this engine. Uh, this is, like I said, just a way earlier engine. That's the reason that we're going to be trying to fix this later on. And, like I said, we may have to boil the cylinder out. So, you know, like I said, the, the, the reason that we're doing this is we need to get all the, you know, if I pulled this down and, you know, there was some major issues that it wouldn't be worth fixing, then I wouldn't want to be looking for block bearings and parts and stuff like that. So we looked it over. We know what's up. We're going to uh, pack some grease in her, get these covers back on. And to preserve it, get a cover over the top there. Uh, probably going to measure this. I think I've got a two-inch governor up there, which this thing probably needs a three. Yeah, it's a three-inch hole, but we can run a two on it. I just want to see what these... So a seven-and-a-half-inch bolt pattern. I think I've got a governor that'll fit it. Somebody has bolted that in and brazed it years back, so we'll have to go with that bolt pattern. Or, uh, we might could get it off if we had to. But anyway, so start getting parts together for it and hopefully one day we'll be able to put this thing together if I live long enough all right well I'm a dog gets even better we got a two and a half inch gardener uh, slotted bolts so we know it'll fit four bolt um, that's good because two and a half would be plenty for that engine it would actually run it if we wanted to run something with it and this is not believe it or not that the governor is not even stuck uh, Pulley's bad, needs to tore down, cleaned up, and redone, but it's not a not a bad governor. Uh, I bought this off of a buddy of mine years back. She's been saving it, and I guess I was saving it for that engine, so that'll work. Two and a half inch governor, perfect. Uh, balls to the wall. All right. Okay, so we had somebody say something about the forge blower. Uh, nine inch outlet. It's got a ten inch inlet. This is actually Buffalo Forge, Buffalo, New York. Uh, picked this up from uh, Guy Scotty, uh, good fellow up in Creedmoor, around Creedmoor, North Carolina, and it's number 25, and this was probably used in a foundry. Uh, I doubt it was used, for, you know, for blacksmithing, something this big, it would have been used for smelting, uh, but I want to show you something. Uh, this thing, you can spin it by hand and get air out of it, you can feel it, but I'm going to show you how balanced it is. So I'm going to... We'll get on the other side of my bar here. I got railings up to hopefully keep anybody out from that flywheel. So, as you can see, this pulley has got a broken spot. Now, I'm going to spin that every time it stops with this broken spot at the top because the balance. Because it's broke, this is lighter up here than what it is here. If it goes past it, it will actually slowly roll back and be in the same spot. So that is pretty amazing balance. So let's see, it would roll that way. Give it a roll and I'll stay over here completely out of the way. I'm not sticking my hands in anything or nothing like that. And we'll just let her roll here and see what happens. Ooh, it went a little bit past it and it's slowly rolling back still rolling back it's hard to see but it's barely moving and it stopped about just about the same spot every time and it's still rolling back a little bit pretty amazing though and then you got the you got the key on the bottom too that actually adds weight and you see it stop with it toward the bottom so let's do it one more time pretty amazing the balance and it's sort of like them turbos there it goes past it and start coming back down until that key's about down on bottom. And there you go. 
same place so that's how well balanced it is so I'm hoping to have that hooked up we might run it on one of these little steam engines here just for the heck of it uh, nice nice blower and uh, just haven't had time to to do anything with it that I'd like to do we could use it to throw some air into the boiler if we wanted and really get it rolling it wouldn't take much speed at all on these one of these little engines but anyway just wanted to show you that all right all right folks I figured I'd bring this uh, governor down just see what it looked like on here uh, so I hoping I could bolt it down but it don't fit uh, it had a bigger governor this is only two and a quarter I thought it was two and a half but it's still gonna work what we're gonna do the bolt holes are off anyway so it would be turned to where the belt wouldn't go on so what we'll do is we'll redrill the plate because we're gonna run this governor either way this is an early governor it actually had a curved spoke flat belt pulley on it so we'll find another one uh, really early governor so that would be neat on this engine and it's lined up about where it would need to be lined up at but uh, it will work we'll, we'll run it try to make it look decent and, uh, go from there but uh, that's that's one less thing I got to mess with I got to hunt down or find we'll have to find a pulley for it and you know a few other odds and end parts and stuff like that but uh, these governors are you see a lot of them that don't have the valve on it if they don't have the valve it's pretty much useless it's just parts um, if you're going to rebuild one you need it with the valve and everything so anyway that's a good one there that's a really early governor too it's not a it's not a later model so it matches the engine pretty well all right the other things we are missing is one of these with the babbit not a problem we can make it we can rebabbit it we can machine it we'll do whatever we need to do with that um, I do have a horizontal mill if we use a, a five inch cutter well it's five and a quarter but if we use a five and a quarter cutter we could get it close without uh, having to uh, report in there but uh, you know we will do we're gonna do what we got to do so the rod uh, missing rod bearing and the cap the end well not really a cap I'm gonna show you what it looks like sort of a band with the the wedge that would go in it'd be two wedges and they're pretty simple to make uh, the band would be simple to make and then we can pour casting and do the machine work for the for the rest of it so basically this is what it is it's a band that goes around it the bearing uh, which is nothing but brass we can pour a big chunk of that uh, run it a little softer than what I was running some of that make sure there's a lot of you know enough copper in it and then we can go from there and build that and then we can build the strap that shouldn't be a problem at all and then uh, the wedges so all that's you know an easy fix just it's time consuming but it's an easy fix and uh, we'll get that taken care of it's kind of funny I don't know if this is paint or what it is on this thing but it almost looks like mill scale you know when you get a hot roll and there's mill scale on it that's what that looks like I'm not saying that's what it is that's just what it looks like uh, could be black paint or something like that but need anyway so I think that's it besides the eccentric I measured that out it's 11 inches by inch and three quarter so we're gonna put some ads out trying to find an eccentric that size and if we do we do if we don't we'll make one and I've already got an ad out for the block bearing and I think I've actually located one uh, it's a new one it's new old stock it's a split bearing but it's not looks wise what I'd like to have but it will work and if I could find a, a bearing you know it looks sort of like this but it's well it looked just like this it'd be the same basic bearing probably um, it may not have all the adjustments on it and stuff but if I could find a bearing like that uh, even if it was a five inch bore instead of a five and a quarter like I need or if it was a six inch bore you know we can space it report whatever we need to do to make it the right size so anywhere from a five inch to a six inch and maybe even a four and a half because I could bore the whole bearing out and put a bigger and you know refor the babbit bigger so that's what we're looking for uh, I'm gonna make an offer on the the newer one I found and see maybe if, if they'll take a lot less for it because they they have a place where it says to make an offer and I'm not it's a believe it or not it's a five and three eighths I don't know how many people would be looking for a five and three eighths block bearing and this is sort of a surplus company so uh, you know they'll either take it or leave it right so the rods been on this or not the rod but the the actual uh, valve rod it went to the eccentric uh, you can see the bend in it we can straighten that it's not an issue either uh, not a problem I'm sorry so uh, 
I'm going to go ahead and spray this stuff with that curl and of course we'll make a new rod you can see it's just slid in and wedged don't know why that was welded we'll have to check that out and make sure it's going to be strong enough from top and bottom and all uh, we'll pull the cross heads off pull everything apart this is one that'll get torqued completely down and redone and you know not because i want to do it but because it needs it it really needs it it's you know it's one of them deals to where well i guess the baits is we about to wear it down too so but uh but anyway uh really really nice engine i like the engine it's well worth fixing uh, for history's sake. Right, folks, very close to being done. 